It's definitely a lot easier when I just copy what you're doing. <laughs> Today I'm working with Adam. He's an incredible comic book artist and caricature artist. He's gonna be showing us some simple tips and tricks on how you take your art to the next level. Adam, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you spending some time with me, teaching me how to draw, because I have some skills, but they're, they could definitely use some improvement. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. What's the first step? The first step is warming up. Okay. Like, if I'm on an easel to where, you know, I know I'm gonna be fighting gravity with this arm and drawing from an easel, you might wanna do a few arm circles or something like that to get going. And then the second thing is really actually just to get your brain working. Shape exercises is one of my favorite things to do. Okay, let's do it. So let's say, you just draw a random shape, and then we'll draw another shape. These shapes can be transformed into characters, into things from your imagination. It's a great place to start, especially when you have that kind of creative mental block if you don't know what you want to draw. I should have asked, is there a way you should be holding a pen or pencil? Is there a best kind of technique for holding? No matter how you hold it, as long as you get the results that you like, I say go for it. Understand the fundamentals and the ratios first, and then expand from there. Know the proportions of a face so you can take it and shape it and mold it however you like. In portrait drawing and animation, what they would typically say is you start with a circle. We'll make two lines right in the middle there. And this is going to be the eye line. So there should be about a space here that's about an eye width apart. We'll leave a line where the nose is going to be. Really, you can have fun with this in terms of how long you'd like the jaw to be, but let's just go down. So the ears are going to be up just a little bit higher than the eyes. And then from the nose to the bottom of the chin is about halfway on mine, is about here. So that's where the lips are going to go. Often a confident line is gonna look a lot better than one that you like patiently take time with. Just commit to it, just draw it. You can always erase it. If you were gonna draw me, where do you start if you're gonna draw somebody? With you, you know, you're kind of tall, athletic looking. Generally, the weight of your face is down here. Same thing I would say like on Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. Athletic guys usually, you know, we have bigger chins. See, I said we, I kind of put us in that category. I like it. <laughs> this is the top of your head and that's your eye line. And since I said most of the weight is gonna be down here, I'm gonna put your chin probably like down here. The story I wanna tell is more beard than, you know, than here where your mouth is. Because your brows are prominent, I'm just going to start with the shape. And I'm gonna go here. Again, I'm not lifting my pencil, and more or less a rectangle up there, but again, we're kind of making some curved lines. One good habit is to try and keep the tip of your pen or pencil on the paper as much as possible. If you do too many small lines, things can get a little blurry, a little fuzzy. You really want one continuous stroke. And then I'm gonna start your nose, and this is gonna be space, so there's really no pencil or no line there, because again, we're just kind of implying that that's there. I kind of like that, the not connecting the lines and applying it. I think it just gives it such a nice, clean look. Yeah, and you know what it does also is it helps the viewer's eye do it in their mind. The main thing with hair when we're doing this is to kind of vary our line shapes a little bit. If we did, let's say, one line like that and went all the way up. So then for the next line, let's go about halfway, but let's go further out. We'll take another line and go further in. And that's really what you want to do, just make sure it's random so all the lines are different. Like that. Yeah, that's perfect. Everything has a rhythm and water can be very hard to draw. Hair can be very hard to draw. But once you figure out the rhythm and how it moves, all of a sudden it's very easy. Well, easier. <laughs> <laughs> I found that after a while I was getting into this nice flow or this rhythm. It was really therapeutic and relaxing just to be drawing. I'm looking good. Oh yeah. If you're gonna be a caricature, be a good looking caricature. Let's do some big shoulders. Now the pectoral muscle is gonna connect with this shoulder, you know, kind of like around here. So I'm gonna draw a sweeping line. And then I'm gonna do a little circle here. So I'm gonna use the side of the pencil and fill in a little bit. Draw our light bulb just so we don't forget. This shape here in the nose, we're thinking like, okay, how is this going to cast a shadow? And we can just kind of follow this, you know, to think like, okay, so there's gonna be a shadow under the nose. As a filmmaker, I know how lighting works, but it's a lot different when you're the one actually drawing in the light and the shadows on paper. You could do like a neckline, something like that. Oh, sure. And again, I'm not connecting it, so I'm still leaving a space here. 
And if we want to create the shadow, since again, our light source is up there, we can just add a heavier line. Now, since we've kind of built this up, especially with these few shadows, and it doesn't take much. That's the great thing about when you're approaching art like this and with your sketching, is it just takes just a little few little tricks, you know, to, uh, to kind of make you know, something stand out and have a lot more body. The coolest thing I learned is just how easy it is to do the small things. Drawing is really about taking small shapes, dots, and lines and putting them together to make something big. What I think is so cool is it's all like the little pieces that each individual one doesn't really make a difference mm -hmm. on its own, but as they all add up, it creates this like really cool effect and it builds something so much bigger than any one little line could have done. It's not a bunch of things that you have to know. You really have to master about a dozen things. It still comes down to like the 10,000 hours kind of thing to where, you know, you really have to just practice drawing. Secondly, you want to study other artists' work, your heroes and some of the masters and seeing how they do it because Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. And it is definitely true when it comes to art. Practice with intention. It can be really easy just to sketch or doodle and do the same thing over and over again and scribble. But if you really want to get better, spend some time intentionally practicing and trying to do things that are maybe a little bit outside your comfort zone. When you do your art, the first thing I would say is your story. You know, what do you want to say with your art? Composition and all those things are great, but what do you want to say? What story do you want to tell? Art is one of those things, you know, when you enjoy it, that you can literally just get lost in it, you know, and lose track of time and just have so much fun. It can raise your endorphins as much as it is of looking at, you know, something or someone that you find beautiful. There's a lot of science behind it that speaks to, you know, what art does to us. And it really makes a huge difference in our life. Or it can, if you like it. Bad art, not as much, but good art is good art for a reason. It's really cool to see my own art advance so much so quickly because it really is some basic essential tips and tricks and things to do and things not to do that can start moving you in the right direction really quickly. Drawing is so fun because it's so expressive and you can really put your heart and soul into it and make it whatever you want. I love this experience. I think drawing is so cool and it's something that I want to spend more time doing and intentionally practicing to hone my skill at it.